evening and welcome to the July 8th, 2019 meeting of the Northampton School Committee. Uh, my name is David Narkowitz, the mayor, and I'm chairing the meeting. Um, I want to begin by asking the clerk to please call the roll of the school committee. Mayor David Narkowitz. Present. Ms. Molly Burnham. Present. Ms. Rebecca Jasinski is not here tonight. Ms. Laura Fallon. Present. Ms. Sam Hennessy. Present. Ms. Jelani Hoffman. Present. Ms. Jennifer Kelly. Present. Ms. Jennifer Kelly. Present. Mr. Howard Moore. Here. Susan Boss. Present. Mr. Present. Your Honor, you have a quorum. Excellent. I just want to let the um, members of the public know that this uh, meeting is being audio and video recorded. Um, we begin each meeting with a public comment period, and we ask if there's members of the public who wish to speak in public comment to please step forward to the podium. And um, I don't know if we have anyone signed up. Okay, there's no one signed up. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in public comment? Um, was that a yes or no? Oh, okay, All right. just making sure. Um, okay, don't want to force anybody. Uh, next, I'll ask if there are any announcements from members of the school committee. Anyone making, oh, yes, Ms. Burnham. Um, I have um, two announcements. Um, I'll start by, um, I'd like to thank Laura Fallon. Um, Laura served on the MASC Resolution Committee and there was no resolution around charter school funding, and um, she put forward a resolution. All the resolutions will be submitted to the board on Thursday, and the ones that pass will be sent to the delegate assembly at the MASC conference in November to be voted on by delegates across the state and will drive the advocacy for that year. So I'd like to publicly thank Laura for doing that great work. Um, and the second announcement is um, after thinking long and hard, I've decided um, to run for Ward 5 and Hennessy's seat as opposed to the at-large position that I have been in. So I've taken my papers out and will be getting those back. So I wanted the public to know that I won't be running for the at-large seat that I hold right now, but for Ward 5, which is my neighborhood. And I wanted to get a little smaller and work just in my neighborhood. Excellent. Thanks. Any other announcements? Ms. Fallon. I did just want to thank Ms. Burnham for spending the day in Revere um, and um, speaking out so strongly against the expansion. It's Revere. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> yeah, clearly not a game. Sorry. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so they, to speak out against the expansion of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School. So I know that that was a long trip and I appreciate you doing it. it great. Thank you, and thank you, Ms. Hennessy, for that yeah. translation service. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> any other announcements from the school committee? Okay, next we will move on to recommended announcements, uh, actions rather. We have the approval of the minutes of the school committee meeting of June 13th, 2019, um, and the field trip approval of the Jackson Street School Trip to Nature's Classroom in Beckett, Massachusetts, October 15th to the 18th, 2019. I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there a question? I have um, one and maybe two corrections to the notes. Okay. So then we'll take the uh, minutes off of the consent agenda and we'll just vote on the approval of the remaining item, which is the field trip approval. Um, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, uh, as with one item removed, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And if you would maybe make a motion uh, for the minutes with whatever amendments you'd like to see to them. Okay. Or corrections, rather. They're very minor, I think, um, but I just wanted to make sure they were correct. Sorry, I'm getting the page back. So I, the motion would be under public comment period. The second person, sh I believe, should be Kate Dollard. Um, not with a B. D I believe it's D O L. L A R D. I'm not sure if there's Probably one. A spell or checker turned it into Bollard. Most Probably. Yeah. And then I'm not sure about this, so um, others can chime in. But we have future business and meeting dates. And I recall that maybe the superintendent evaluation subcommittee was changed and did not happen on June 17th. But it appears in these notes that it might have. I think it's the 24th. This it was changed. 
because of negotiations. Yeah, it got changed because of negotiations. I remember. Yeah. It might have been. It might have been correct at the time. It was. Yeah. yeah. It was correct. It was on the time. agenda, and then and it got changed, changed. changed. after. That's Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Okay. So, would you move to approve with those two changes? I would. Okay. Is there a second? Any other uh, comments? All those in favor, then, of approving the minutes with those uh, changes, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So now we'll move into the reports and recommendations, and we will begin with the introduction of our new principal at Leeds Elementary Schools, Christine Wentz. And so could you please step forward to the podium and... <laughs> Short. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, good evening. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Provost, Mayor, um, and all the school committee members for the opportunity to introduce myself to the larger district community as principal of Leeds Elementary School. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be part of such a positive community. Um, I feel very fortunate to have participated in the ALT retreat in June to begin preparing for the upcoming school year. And the Northampton administrative leadership team has been very warming, welcoming, supportive. Uh, it's been wonderful. Uh, in my first five days at Leeds, I've had the opportunity to meet many students, families, staff members, and attend the Summer Eats kickoff at Ryan Road today. Um, at the Family Fourth Celebration, members of the Leeds PTO introduced me to many students and families from Leeds and all over Northampton. Uh, it was a great event to be at. Um, together with the support of the PTO, we have set up several opportunities for caregivers and community members to meet before school begins. So on July 17th, uh, you can stop by for coffee, tea, and pastry in the Leeds Playground at 9 a.m. August 1st at 6 p.m., we'll offer pizza with the principal on the playground. August 24th, students, caregivers, and community members are welcome to a chalk draw at Leeds Playground at 10 a.m. Uh, and also, we're setting up an evening at what, um, Meadowbrook for an outreach meet and greet. The date and time will be short, set shortly. Uh, and all of those, of course, are weather permitting. We'll be inside if, if there is some weather issues. Uh, during the next months, I'll be establishing new relationships with the community. It's my intention to continue the legacy of Mr. Kanata, uh, to collaborate with all stakeholders to support the district's core values, providing engaging learning experiences, enabling students to reach their potential, all while nurturing kindness and empathy. Um, throughout my educational career, I've built many positive relationships with students, caregivers, and stakeholders, and really look forward to developing many more at Leeds and in Northampton. Um, as many of you may know or not know, I am in the process of relocating and have found a residence in Florence. So I'll be moving in August, and I'm very excited to become part of the Northampton community. So, Excellent. Thank you. Welcome. Thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions or comments for Principal Wentz? Dr. Provost? I do not. Okay. I asked her a bunch of questions before I heard her. <laughs> right, yes, I already uh, answered all of his questions. So well, welcome, and we look forward to working with you as part of the ALT team. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, next item on the agenda is a vote. Uh, this is on uh, transition coordinator. Um, and I believe we'll recognize uh, Pam Plummer who's here. And, and um, <laughs> is, is this a job description? Job description. Yes, yeah, so this is the approval of a job description. Right, so yep. you had a chance to ask questions around the time the budget was approved, but I'm, this is the job description that we gathered based on um, some of the feedback that some of the discussion we had at that meeting and also local and uh, national job descriptions for transition coordinators. And ours is a half time position, but it's, um, I think it's doable with this job description. Okay. Are there questions uh, from Ms. Yes. I, I think that my biggest concern is that there are so many bullet points on, mm -hmm. and when I get to the mm -hmm. bottom and it says 3.5 hours a day right. working. Um, I sort of wonder if some, of, not to micromanage, but if if some of those bullet points are a part, are embedded in some of the other tasks. Yep, they certainly are, and I think also it was why it was important in 
different spots where we said they serve as a consultant the liaison the liaison still has these other roles it's not taking over these positions because right now we have nobody doing right. the position and I think it also is clear that certainly the primary goal for this position is to start with our 18 to 22 year old students and be able to go to shift down from there as time allows um, which which absolutely is doable for the upcoming year as time goes on we're actually going to have a lot more 18 to 22 year old students um, we actually have some local smaller school districts who are looking to tuition students into our programs so I think um, to start with that focus is important and to grow but to be able to start with a 0.5 position focused on that smaller group of students is doable for sure it's really great having you know dear friends who do have children that are that have that same need I'm very moved that we're thinking of the whole community yeah. um, but it it is a lot of bullet points mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had mr. Moore and then and then I'll come back to you and I don't know this isn't really in the job description but it seems like there's some of the things might overlap with the um, whoever is con uh, sort of coordinating internships at the high school and um, in terms of the bullet points, if if there would be a way, to, you know, particularly in terms of, you know, identifying sort of, uh, you know, whatever you call them, you know, jobs or placements, you know, community resources, um, if there if that is possible to coordinate those two lists as opposed to having two possibly competing or overlapping lists. Yeah, that's absolutely a goal. We also have. Um, our pre program, which we just found out that Riverside is our pre um, organization that we'll be working with. So it's lots of different pieces. I think this position for me, the key piece is there, like the case manager for the students that we absolutely have to be making sure these programs are solid and in place for. Um, but at, yeah, the, certainly some of the internship sites, there will be some overlap. And over time, there'll be a lot more um, knowledge of where these resources in the community exist mm -hmm. they're there now where right. our connections are just sort of uh, they're not as strong as I'd like them to be Ms. Voss. Um, I'm just curious how many students we have right now in that 18 to 22 and where how quickly you see it growing and how fast what, have, what do you see it growing to in the next few years we have a number of juniors I don't know the numbers precisely but yeah. I'd say like close to a half a dozen juniors or going into senior year actually we have a lot of students um, going into senior year and then we have a couple of students at Riverside a few students who access services at, um, at the Prospect Meadow Farm we have a student who's going into the ice program at UMass next year which requires they, they all just require so much troubleshooting um, and management um, it's not a lot of students but it really does require a lot being able to respond and knowing that that's you, you as the liaison you're the primary person and that's your responsibility there aren't any other things on your plate um, but over time we have a, a number of students coming and as I mentioned some students who are looking to tuition in also so because some of these smaller towns don't have programs so yeah Mr. Coffin. thank you so um I, I, I share the same uh, concerns when I first read this as Mrs. Berman. First of all, let me thank you again. You know I'm a big fan of this and we've talked about it and stuff. So thank you for and reaching out. But it kind of feels like you've, you've, dip, you've gotten all these great sort of potential functions and it just feels rather overwhelming for a half-time person. So um, if we're, if I'm con just concerned about running the risk of alienating someone that's interested and just says, I just can't do this. Can we add language that says due to the fact that this is a 0.5, position um, some of these uh, essential functions will need to be prioritized oh yeah I, if that's allowable I'm not I'm not well versed in how the job descriptions get edited after this point but I think that's totally reasonable certainly that's how I would yeah. see it as the supervisor of this right position. I mean if we had full time would you add to this I think we wouldn't add to this. I think we'd spread down. We'd be able to start yeah. going earlier and earlier in the students' With more experience. Students, yeah. 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 So that was one. Are you looking to Dr. Provost to say whether that's okay? Well, I think <laughs> right now they're all called essential functions. Right. So it's hard to say that some of the essential functions are not so essential. I think the way to do it is to maybe have a list of essential functions and then have a list of other duties. Mm -hmm. And the, if you can find things that you could move from the essential function list to the other duties list. Mm -hmm. That would be helpful, I think. The other is I didn't, in reading this, unless I missed it, I didn't know whether this was a, I know, I, this is, is this a teacher A? Position? Yes, 
So I don't think that's there. A, uh, unit A? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's on my draft. Yes, it's it could be seen as administrative job, mm -hmm. but the title of coordinator, right. so I think that would right. be helpful for candidates. Um, I, I also am concerned because it reads to me like a case manager, like you said, mm -hmm. and a systems builder and, mm -hmm. builder and someone who's developing relationships that are going to be long-lasting and deeper and better for families and doing PD for teachers and educators and being a liaison with the community, that in and of, in and of itself is a monstrous kind of mm -hmm. position. But what scares me is that there's a, there's a number of bullets there that talk about direct service with students. Mm -hmm. And my concern, having, having seen this many times, is that a systems builder kind of person is difficult for people to comprehend and they begin to ask that person to do a job that sucks up all their time. Like, can you find this kid a position or can you support them on the job? And um, so I'm concerned that you're running the risk of adding too many elements of direct service here without a caveat, which I noticed you added before about attending transition planning meetings, like you purposely said you won't be attending all of them. There's not that many even, but I'm more concerned about the fact that it, it says pretty explicitly the direct service component. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering, is that something that you share my concerns? And, is, and if so, is there anything you can do to add the language here? Because again, I think a candidate would be equally as concerned if they wanted to get out of that realm and move into right. a more of a management coordinator or systems building position, they would be concerned. I definitely see it as absolutely possible for our core group of students who currently are 18 to 22 as being able to provide, uh, honestly, our, our sites provide most of the direct care. Um, but th at this point, there's no, there's none, right? There's really no link between a person who is going between that site and coming back to the school and sharing what's happening and being able to, to make those connections. So if to start, I think it's totally doable. Um, if we were to think that that person would be able to do it for all of the 18 to 22 students plus the students 14 to 18 who are possibly going to get services 18 to 22 and beyond that, um, mm -hmm. then I think it would be very, very difficult. Uh, but that's not what I'm foreseeing, at least um, at the beginning. Um, we could put a caveat so, in. I'm, I guess I'm just confused. I mean, the, the bullets that say work with individual students or group of students to, to prepare them for the workplace, including a, a laundry list of things. Um, uh, there was about job placement, uh, working with uh, utilizing the work-based learning plan or similar yeah. to those. This, do, you, do you understand so my concern? Those are things I, that yeah. the, the sites are doing. Yeah. There's just, yeah. there has to be someone from the Northampton Public Schools who's connected to that to sure. ensure that that's occurring. Absolutely. So I don't see that they'll be creating a whole lot. Right. It's really just partnering. So the language okay. could be different. Maybe that was what I got out Similar of it. Similar to the language with the special education Absolutely. liaisons. It's right. really partnering to ensure right. it occurs yeah. versus being, so we have our OT and our speech yeah. language pathologist. They are doing all this direct work. Yeah. Um, but then connecting it to the work that's happening outside, I think that's okay. the place where I think we're saying the same thing. So yeah. when I read it, I was concerned okay. it's about job placement. I didn't want that person to lose the other responsibilities you want them to do. So if yeah. I'm just one person and I read it that way, I think it would be helpful to yeah. to look at just making sure that I think your your the wording of case management sounds good, like right. it's not direct service. And uh, if it was direct service, as you know, it just takes so many hours, and I think that would alienate some people that are that are ready for this position. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, One last. Ms. Hennessy. I think this is great. And I do understand what he's saying about that one. Um, and I get the 18 to 22 year old that this were the, where the focus will have to be. And that this hasn't, you've been doing this with your team. Mm -hmm. My, and the high school folks have been yeah. doing it. Yeah. So do you feel like this will initially take a lot of your time to supervise? Mm -hmm. And how much do you, are you concerned about that? No, Okay. because right now I'm, you're, you're, okay. yeah, and it's so spread out and I, you know, counting on so many people and to know that, you know, I, we all have a vision and, and I think it's a similar vision. It's just that person who can ensure that these three steps happen in order to make it, um, uh, in, in order to make the outcomes that we're looking for for these students happen. That's the piece that's just not there right now. And it's so hard because we all have competing, yeah. um, competing, really seriously competing issues that pop up and to prioritize things is really hard. So to know somebody, this is gonna be their primary priority is just really, it feels really good. So for a little while it'll be a little for bit For a little while, like, right. yeah. <laughs> as long as it's a little while. 
Yeah. So, are there any other questions? Ms. Fallon, you seem puzzled. I'm perplexed uh, with all of the, if we're supposed to be voting on this in concept or right. voting on this actual description with all of the changes that have been suggested. I think there was just, there weren't, I don't know that there were changes that suggested. There was one um, caveat language put in. Uh, well, there, and there was also a suggestion that they be um, some actions, outside duties, you know, be ch changed to outside duties. So. We could, yes. Can I offer an amendment to the motion, which okay. would be the motion as stated with the addition to leave it up to Dr. Plummer to figure out um, mm -hmm. what makes sense in terms of our feedback and to approve it with that caveat. Okay. That'd be great because I'd love to hire this person. This so time. that's the motion. <laughs> Ms. Fallon, would you second that motion? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about the description? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that is um, approved. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Palmer. Next, we have um, a series of donations. Um, the first is a donation uh, from the NHS PTO to the math department, $1,000. Art department, $1,000. Science department, $600. Sound equipment, $1,350 for a total of $3,950. Do you have anything to add about those? Uh, no, those I things? think that details all the information that I have as well. Okay. Um, Make a motion to accept the donation from the Northampton High School PTO in the amount of $3,950. Okay. Second. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Next, we have um, another donation from the NHS PTO. Um, this is a broken down chorus field trips, a thousand robotics class software, a thousand goals class, two fifty for a total of two thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Anything unique about these? Okay. Motion to accept the gift uh, donation from the Northampton High School PTO in the amount of two thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Is there a second? Okay. Any questions about this one? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? And then finally, we have a gift from the Bridge Street PTO to the Lego League Junior Robotics Program, $4,000. Ms. Lemica, is there anything? The only piece I'd like to add is that it's going to fund the elementary school team registrations and participation in the first uh, Lego League Junior Robotics Program. Okay. Excellent. I'm I make a motion to accept the donation from the Bridge Street PTO in the amount of $4,000. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And once again, just a grand thank you to the PTOs for this gift of over $10,000 to Northampton Public Schools. It's Definitely. absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Next, we have a report uh, from Ms. Fallon, and this is on the Collaborative for Educational Services, which she now represents the school committee on. I do. Uh, and I don't know that I appreciated Mr. Moore's service in that respect until I sat on it myself and approved our first budget and needed them to, they printed out three pages of acronyms for me <laughs> because everything's an acronym. All of the grants, all the state grants, federal grants, everything's an acronym. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm, it, it's a steep learning curve. Um, but in the process of our last meeting, um, we were looking at the, amending the Articles of Agreement um, and I noticed that the state law required us to report out to the school committee four times a year, but our articles of agreement for the collaborative said that we were to report back every meeting. And so I made the mistake of bringing it up and there's pretty clear consensus among the 30 other members present that that was something that I needed to be doing. So, so I- So my apology for only, <laughs> only, only reporting back like a couple of times a year. So, <laughs> well, ironically, the reason that we were we were reviewing the articles of agreement was to amend them to establish a policy committee and because I noted that I am now one of the two representatives <laughs> on the policy committee for the collaborative so that didn't work go as well as I'd hoped but anyway what I'm hoping to do is um, you all should have gotten this afternoon after each meeting um, Bill Deal publishes an executive director's report um, and it's usually between 8 and 15 pages. I'll have that sent to you, and I'm going to make my report less than two minutes and just pick out the highlights of the things that I think are interesting. But if you ever have questions about anything, 
um, you can ask me, or I'm assuming Dr. Provost would be able to answer. So um, the report will be pretty short. Uh, the 2019 Summer Academy is in session now with 23 workshops in the areas of history and social studies, special ed, uh, math, science, English language learners, social justice and equity, technology, Google Apps, reading, literacy, trauma, and effective teaching. Um, another thing that I thought was great was that um, in order to support member districts who are co-teaching, they're working on assembling a cohort for an advanced training and coaching experience for co-teaching teams. Um, something that I am crossing my fingers for is that they're investigating other potential shared services and opportunities to save districts money. Um, and so at the request of several superintendents, they've been investigating translation services that can meet written or verbal translation needs in multiple languages. So they're discussing a possible partnership with Lexikeet, a digital translation and interpretation service to offer special pricing to collaborative members. So I'm waiting to hear back on that. Um, and then something else that I thought was really interesting is that they've just, the collaboratives just launched a program to host four summer interns from area colleges. Um, and the, it's the colleges that pay the interns as part of their, as part of their educational experience. So, um, they will be having a Mount Holyoke student working under the supervision of the Director of Development um, in coordination with Alternative Education, Professional Services, um, Research and Evaluation on a project um, titled STEM Education and Pathways, Needs and Assets in the Pioneer Valley, um, which I thought was really a great thing to do. Um, and the results will be reported to superintendents um, at their roundtable meetings. Um, and made available to the board with the goal of mapping resources and identifying both institutional partners and more importantly funding partners to help address STEM needs. So that's my two minute collaborative report. Thank you very much. Um, while you have the floor, we'll turn to the report of the rules and policy subcommittee and um, several uh, first readings that you have on policies tonight. Right, so they are all first readings. We won't be taking a vote this month. Um, the first reading, if you all recall, we had Noah Cassis, um, a student at NHS, who spoke to us at our public comment during the last meeting um, about a proposed revision to our acceptable use policy. Um, he worked with the IT department and district administrators um, and then also um, attended our subcommittee meeting. Uh, to establish that there was an appropriate procedure in place to protect student data privacy and that he was presented a revision to help the rest of the student body to be confident that their personal data is perfect, protected. Um, you all should have the policy. There are minor changes to it. Um, and I hope you know the yellow. I did, and thank you very much. Really helpful. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so the language that's been added is that our schools have software and systems in place that monitor and record all internet usage that the district will make a summary of the procedures governing the use of these softwares and systems public and clear accessible format in the handbook on the district website. The district will intermittently monitor internet network traffic and other usage of electronic resources, for instance, by tracking destination URLs of individual users. Users should have no expectation of privacy when browsing the web, sending or receiving email, or using other electronic school resources. The district does provide email accounts for the purpose of school-related communication. We also uh, just replaced language where it referred to the district to read the Northampton Public Schools and made some, I think we just changed student handbook um, to lowercase letters. And that was always changed on the acceptable use policy, which is policy. JNDB. Thank you. Hi, JNDB. Yeah, we know just on the copy that we got, there's a place where in that paragraph it's highlighted. The the first couple of sentences is a is a redundancy. It's a cut and paste that doesn't have the addition in it. You see that? Mm -hmm. So where it says our schools have software and systems in place, mm -hmm. that's the same as under the yellow highlighted. Our schools have software and systems in place. So really, it's um, right. So what we're what we're reading that's just that's a. That's not a, what's the word? Scrivener's error? Yeah. Sorry, Scrivener. Uh, that's, um, that's, not, that's not the text we're talking about. The text we're talking about is the part that's bolded and, and yellowed. Right. So the Scrivener's error we will have remedied before we bring it to you for a vote next month. Um, 
And then next up we have uh, section D, essentially of our policies that you referred to us to review. Um, the financial auditor to recommend that we review the entire section D, which is, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, if I have a question on this, should I ask it now or should I wait? Sure, on the call? acceptable use yeah. policy, sure. It's, it's minor, thank you for this. It's, as you know, I care about this a lot. Um, two minor things. One, after your big yellow thing, you just need a period. <laughs> and um, a question I have, in, if you go back to the second sentence of this policy, which I understand is quite old, by providing intranet and internet access, do we actually have intranet? No, we talked about that. that was something we discussed during the meeting. And I, so I believe we do. I can't 100% say that that is the case, but I do know that we have, <coughs> we have some very old structures within the, the district that I'm not sure are, have been eliminated. So I was uncomfortable getting rid of that for that reason. Might be worth just asking before the next reading because in my travels to Northampton Public Schools, I've never come across it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist for some of our employees. But mm -hmm. I don't think it exists for students anymore. Yeah, we can certainly verify that before that. It, it makes us look like we're in the dark ages if we don't have it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was that, was that yeah, all? That's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, and so we were reviewing Section D at the recommendation of our financial auditor. Um, Section D refers to fiscal management. Um, and we're to review that periodically, and it had been a while, so we will be going through the entire section. These first, uh, we decided to divide it up to make it easier. Uh, these are all first readings. Um, the first policy is policy DA, fiscal management goals. Um, as you can see, the only thing that we will be changing on that is the adoption date for the revision date um, when it is approved by the committee. Section, I'm sorry, policy DB, annual budget. Um, the language was modified. Um, this was taken, um, some of it was taken from the MASC August 2016 update because ours hadn't been updated prior to that since 2003 to read that the annual budget is the financial expression of the educational program of the school department and it reflects the goals and objectives of the school committee to meet the needs of all students. The budget then is more than just a financial instrument and requires on the part of the committee, the staff and the community, an orderly and cooperative effort to ensure sound fiscal practices for achieving the educational goals and objectives of the school district. Can I keep going? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, file, sorry, policy DBD is budget goals and objectives. Um, that had initially come from the policy manual from 1978 for the Northampton School Department. And we would like to revise it um, pretty substantially to read the first priority in the development of an annual budget will be the educational we welfare of the children in our schools consistent with the interests of the taxpayers. Before voting to adopt the budget, the committee will scrutinize it thoroughly so that it may be adhered to as adopted. However, the committee recognizes that unforeseen circumstances may require transfers between accounts during a fiscal year. The superintendent will have overall responsibility for budget preparation adhering to deadlines set forth in the city charter. Um, next well, we... Is a period the yeah. charter. Okay. Um, next up, we have policy DBJ, Budget Transfer Authority. Um, the only change to this is in the last paragraph before, where it says, um, before the end of each fiscal year, the school committee shall hold a vote to grant the superintendent or his or her designee the authority without the, the above $10,000 restriction to transfer funds to close the fiscal year books. Um, next, we have Policy DD, funding proposals and applications. Um, we are proposing that we eliminate in the third paragraph uh, the last part of the sentence to read, the superintendent will be responsible for seeking out and coordinating the development of proposals for all specially funded projects. Um, Dr. Provost had mentioned the sheer number of grants and proposals that were generated and um, we didn't feel the need to have those submitting submitted to the committee for approval due to the time-sensitive nature of so many of them. 
I'd also so point out that many of those are done collaboratively through the collaborative, and oftentimes we have um, just a matter of days in order to sign on if we want to try to um, be a part of the grant that the collaborative is seeking. So it just, I don't think would be feasible to bring them all before the school committee for approval. Right. So I understand um, the intention there and I agree with it, but a question I have is, what if there was a proposal that required any sort of spending long term in a budget from the school committee would that not be part of this so you know there's a grant that says we want to do this and we're going to pay for this but you have to match it in some way that kind of thing i would want to make sure did come to the school committee and it's, is that covered how do i see that so if there was a uh funding proposal that required us to add resources for a match, then it certainly would be part of the budget. But many of the times when we have grants that require matching funds, we're doing it with existing um, resources. So for example, um, a match could be that we provide the building that it takes place in. Um, or the match could be that we provide some of the accounting for it through our business office. Um, so those matches are all done, and they are real matches. They are. Um, a, a contribution of resources from the district, but they're not additional resources. If we had a situation where we needed to create a new position or create um, or buy some new equipment in order to meet a match, then it would come to the school committee through the budget process. I'm just, that's helpful. I think um, also, though, if there's, say, equipment that needs to be purchased down the road that, you know, maybe whatever this proposal is buys certain equipment for the first couple years and then we have to provide equipment in future years. Um, that kind of thing I'd also want to come to the school committee. I don't know how to articulate that. I could give a specific example, but um, how would you go, how, how do we make sure that we have control over that long-term spending? Well, I'm really not aware of any situations where you're under an obligation in order to continue to provide a match after the grant runs out. Sometimes you are during the grant period, but once they're no longer providing funding for you, there's no leverage really. Um, sometimes there are situations where we will initiate a program based on um, resources receiving through a grant and then not be able to fund them through the budget and then the program might end. But I. I just can't think of a situation where we'd be committing future budgets to resources by um, participating in a grant at, in the current budget. And, and these are also coming out of MASC, right? A lot of this work is coming out of the things that you've checked on. Um, Some of it, not all of it. Not all of it. Okay. Not all of it. And sometimes we do have slight variations. I can compare the two. Oh, wait. <laughs> I have all of it. So is this from MASC or is this our own edit? This edit, I believe, was ours. Um, and I'm... I wonder if we might want to consider modifying the edit I understand the reason for it and it's very reasonable but modifying it to some extent with um, yes the superintendent will be responsible for seeking and coordinating the development of proposals for all specially funded projects that's very broad and I could see a lot of things fitting under what Dr. Provo said and that's fine but I do think there's situations where it's you know, you would use some judgment and perhaps bring some of these things to the school committee. And at a minimum, I'd like to consider putting in here, and the school committee will be notified, or we're aware of it at least, so that we know what we're committing to. So I will tell you, Dr. Voss, that when I'm looking at the MASC policy, yeah. that the, what they did do is they put a note at the bottom and said that regulations for staff investigation and submission of proposals are frequently needed to implement a policy in this area so I guess their view is to do it through that they understood that some of this was going to be at the regulations level and not at the policy level but they did include language um, in the policy that the superintendent 
will be responsible for seeking out, coordinating the development of proposals for all specially funded projects and for submitting the proposals to the committee for approval. Um, Ms. Foss, your, your, your concerns example. about long-term life. I'll give a specific example. And I hesitate because I don't know all the details, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not trying to pick on one specific thing, but um, we have a global STEM program, which is fantastic, and it came with outside funding, but it also required some matching funding, and it serves a relatively small number of kids and is quite expensive, and it's in our budget. And I think when stuff like that comes in, um, we should be aware of what we're signing up for, and it lasts for several years. So that's the kind of thing that I would want, as a school committee member, to know that we were entering and have a sense of how much is it going to cost us over the next few years and have some conversation about instead of just letting it be. So that's one example. I don't know. Okay. Dr. Provost. And that's an example of an item that comes through the budget. Um, when we started the Global STEM program, it was part of my first few budget and then the budget that the school committee adopted for that reason. Right. Um, there was grant funding, but there was new district funds that needed to be committed in order to do it. And so that's why um, that's why I see it separate from these other types of proposals where um, CES, for example, says we're applying for the Title III grant as a consortium for the whole district, I mean, for all of our member districts. If you want to participate, you need to sign up in the next three days. So I wonder, as a, I'm, I'm trying to hear, see this as an opportunity. So if, if we knew that we were buying, if we were agreeing to something, I, I totally hear what you're saying, but if we knew we were agreeing to something, then later on when you came to us and said, now the grant run, funding has run out, but we want, you know, I want your approval for additional dollars, that seems like a winning mm -hmm. thing. I mean, you previously endorsed this. So not only that, but, you know, I was struck with what Laura had shared before about all the things that CES is doing, mm -hmm. and it was great to hear everything they're doing and I didn't know which parts of those we're involved, we're involved with and, and aren't, which is secondary. But I just wonder if there's a way, uh, without giving you too much more work, <laughs> but if there's a way we can know, like on a monthly or bi-monthly, every two month basis, on which grants we have put in. You know, what are we eligible for? What are we waiting to hear about? It would seem like an exciting way to keep up with this stuff, and it would seem like it might accomplish part of what Dr. Voss is asking for, which is we would know right up front. So it'd be kind of a win-win if that's mm -hmm. at all doable, because I was very impressed with the fact that CS is doing all these things. So can we do a similar type of thing uh, very briefly to say these are the grants and the proposals that we have put in as a district? Does that sound like I think I think that might be something we could add to one of the reports. Um, the the uh, barrier that I'm trying to avoid is getting approval before the application is made. I'm not advocating for that at all. Yeah. And I'm, not, but, I'm just saying, uh, right. so I'm not asking for that. I'm just saying, in the spirit of what Dr. Voss was saying, yeah. even if we were notified yeah. that we might be into it, and then we get it, it seemed like momentum would be there to support long term. Sure. And we'd, be, we, sure. we'd be aware of it, and I think it would be a win. I'm just trying to put a positive spin on it. Right. Right. Positive opportunity around an idea that there's some, some, some chances there for us to be more informed about this kind of stuff. Yeah, and I, I do believe that's consistent with my practice on a lot of things like the um, the Innovation Pathway Grant and the um, grant for the Cisco Academy, where yeah. we I didn't know if we would get it or not, but I did want to make the school committee aware because I think it you know had potential educational impact, Absolutely. and there are other things like that that we Absolutely. could certainly right. do. There's more. We'd love yeah. to know more. That's a good example. Ms. Fallon. I guess I just wanted to understand: Is there any reason that this approval, if you were, if there were, like the proposal portion of it, I don't understand why you would need our approval for unless it was somehow a binding grant. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if it came down to the fact that we were going to have to provide something to match or it was going to be a program that would need funding in the future, couldn't it come to us after the fact? Mm -hmm. So I'm just I'm just saying from a policy perspective, there's nothing to prevent present uh, prevent you from applying for any of these things that you wouldn't need our approval for the proposal portion of it. Right. But in the in the event that you actually were awarded the grant. I understand that's not necessarily fair to those who then wouldn't have been awarded the grant. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, isn't that something where if it turns out there was going to need to be a contribution that we could just deal with that at that time? Right. The, the issue is that um, the one you brought up, it could place the school committee in an awkward <coughs> position of saying, no, we don't want to accept these funds. Um, the, I do think there's a way that we can 
beginning past the thought. And when, for example, the proposals are being developed for NEF, um, which is probably the, the main granting source we get in terms of number of grants we get over the course of the year, those proposals are sent to the principals and they're sent to, the, to me to make sure that they're consistent with the educational goals of the community. And then they come to you for acceptance. Um, we could, I think, probably have some kind of a similar process, only it would be after proposals are submitted for other things, um, you know, for private grants and for competitive public grants. I thank you. I think what Dr. Kaufman articulated fits with um, what I was trying to get to. And um, maybe instead of what's crossed out, replace, uh, crossing out what's crossed out, but adding something to the effective, and the committee will be notified of proposals we are um, pending or part of, or however you want to word it. And then when somebody comes up and says, oh, I see that the schools applied for blah, 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 we at least know what's happening. We don't look like we have no clue of what's going on. So I think that would feel like a good compromise. Okay, so remember that for next month. Sure, because it's just the first reading. So. But, well, do you, do you want me to offer a different phrase there for next month, or do you want? Me yeah, to if you want to bring something, that's fine. Not now. Well, no, we're not voting on it. It's now. on first okay. reading, but okay. so that would be something you could bring first. Okay, second. sure. Okay, Miss Hennessy. I guess I will. I will comment when she, um, Ms. Dr. Boss makes the amendment the next time. I'm uncomfortable with it because I feel like it's a policy making a suggestion for how we want the superintendent to behave, and that's part of his evaluation of how he's communicating with us. So I think that's part of his job description, and to make it a, in part of a policy statement to me oversteps the policy. So I think he's doing it. I feel very well informed and I would, so I, I think that's part of the superintendent evaluation, not part of the policy. So when you make a recommendation, we can hash sure. that out, but that's throwing out my eight cents on that. So um, are we still pursuing the idea slash policy of Ask of bringing the uh, grant proposals once awarded to the school committee for approval. Is that what you mentioned? Well, I actually don't know where we are on it now. There were yeah. many proposals made back yeah. and forth. I, I will say this: the, just the 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 grants that are included in the budget and that are part of the budget moving forward are part of the overall school budget that you receive and are asked to vote on every year. So there's that. I guess this would just be an initial, an additional piece of saying new grants that come in after the budget is approved, um, just to be notified about those as well. Okay. Well, we'll wait for language. I, I guess I just want to say the, the notion that we, I think when you when you write grants and you sign off or a superintendent signs off on a grant that they're a part of it, whether it's our grant to a foundation or to a funder, or whether we're signing on as part of the collaborative, I think the expectation is we're going to live up to our financial responsibilities. So I think we'd be walking a really fine line for us to then come back and ask the school committee to vote on that. So I don't know who mentioned that, but I, my belief is that if we make a commitment to be part of a grant, that we've made that commitment. And coming back and asking for a re-vote at that point would be uh, problematic. So I would definitely go against that notion. I think we'd be walking into some real trouble. All right, sounds like we'll have a good discussion on this on the second reading. <laughs> um, next, you have policy DFH fundraising events, and as you can see, it is awaiting further deliberation, so it is, in fact, awaiting for further deliberation. Um, and then the final policy is policy DH, bonded employees and officers, um, that we are not recommending any changes to. It's two sentences, and they were accurate. Yeah, except the adoption. So that'll just be updated. Okay. Yeah, and so those will all be brought back to you in the next one of the second readings, and perhaps a new slew of first readings on the rest of Section B. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for those two reports. Next, we'll have a report from the business manager. Good evening. Um, in your packet was the fiscal 19 appropriation report um, that was run as of July 3rd. There's still a lot of transactions that are happening, trying to close out year end. 
and we're trying to do the final payroll, um, get the encumbrance list to over to the city auditor's office. So we're trying to complete all those tasks by this Friday. Um, so then we'll have a, a good standing of where we finish the end of the year. Um, so those things are still in process at the moment. Um, the gifts, we do have one gift from the PTO, um, Bridge Street PTO for $393.27 that we accepted. And also there are two warrants um, that your representative signed for bill warrants during the month of June. There's two other things that I'd like to mention. Um, we accepted online payments for the first time during June through our city treasurer's office with Unipay. Um, and we set up in the beginning for a trial. We did bus transportation, so the bus passes are being paid online if people choose to do so. Um, and we also have our athletic fees that are on there as well. Um, in the first week, we had 75 families pay online. So we took in over $19,000 on online payments. And um, with the way the Unipay system works, is it's a 25 cent per transaction fee. If they're doing an ACH, um, if you're using a credit card, it's a little bit different structure and it tells you right up front what it is that way. Um, so those are some positive things that we're trying to have people have some convenience if they choose to do so rather than coming in the office or mailing it, they have that availability as well. Cheaper than a stamp. Exactly. My thoughts as well. Um, and we have set it up so they can do multiple children on the same 25 cent transaction. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention is our, our summer meals program is running uh, through our food, food service program. Um, and Ms. Delhanna, who's our food service director, uh, notified me that last week was the first week. They ran it for four days and they served over 250 meals in the first four days. So the program is running successful, and this is her first year doing that, and she's started that program up, so that's also running very well. Some of us enjoyed some of that mm -hmm. meals today, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yep. Okay, thank and you. And to remind people that everybody can go. Yes. I think that's a really important piece of the well, Today was special for adults. Usually it's just special, children. That's right, Correct. just children. Sorry, so, that's so right. children Any eight, child. 18 and under. argue next time. <laughs> <laughs> Any child 18 and under. Um, and also, she just wanted to, um, Ms. Dell wanted me to let you know that they're changing um, the time just slightly because of the summer program. Um, they were missing the time by a little bit, so if they're going to be running the programs, um, it's on our website with a revised time. It's from 12 to 1 at the sites rather than 11.30 to 12.30, and those revised sheets are in the menus are on our district website as well. Excellent. Thank you very much. And now we turn at 7.35 to the superintendent's report. Thank you. On June 17th, the NPS All Listserv received an email that some mistook for spam. <laughs> it said simply, <laughs> Dear colleague, how did you spend your 180 days? I had to send out a second message reminding everyone that this was connected to convocation. I don't know why people forget about convocation. Um, I thought it was a good message. Um, the convocation message, of course, was focused on the idea that time is our most precious resource of all. Because there's no measure of creative budgeting, no new technology, no curriculum that can add a single day to the instructional year. We can waste time, but we cannot manufacture it. And so it is up to us to put each school day to its highest instructional use. I'd intended the email as an invitation to private self-reflection on how our employees had spent the time that they'd been given with our students. I didn't expect that recipients would want to share their reflections with me, but many have. Um, I've enjoyed reading them. And so I'd like to follow suit by sharing my own time study with the public. My first task was to address central office and district staff turnover. Our school business administrator, transportation supervisor, food service director, and school committee clerk all left their positions at about the same time. Filling these key positions and bringing new staff up to speed was essential to maintaining operations. In all these cases, we were able to find experienced, competent, and friendly staff who've not only kept things running, but have come with a number of fresh ideas to help us better serve the public, such as Unipay that you just heard about, and such as Summer Meals, which you just heard about. Then next several months, we're dedicated to the district review process. I will say it one last time. We submitted 
1,148 artifacts to the district review team. And although we've not yet received their report, we did learn a lot about ourselves through the self-study process. We felt that we'd made tremendous progress addressing concerns that had been noted in the last district review, particularly in the areas of financial and asset management, curriculum, student support, technology, and supervision. And we were also able to zero in on assessment practices and professional development as our high priority needs for district improvement are continuing areas of weakness. Our August professional development will focus on enhancing consistency and quality of our assessment practices as we begin heading down that path. Whether or not we're able to improve professional development will depend on collective bargaining. We still have the same amount of professional development time in our calendar that was deemed insufficient in our 2011 district review. So we'll see what happens with that. Just as the district review was winding down, the FY20 budget development process went into high gear. As has been the case for two of the last three budget cycles, we've received extensive public comment, which required us to make substantial changes between our first view budget and our final version. It wasn't quite as bad as the year when we had to construct three complete budget scenarios, but it did require some long and fairly intense additional budget meetings as the ALT team struggled to work and rework and partially undo the original budget proposal. While we were working through the budget process, negotiations for a successor contract started. As you all know, this has consumed a great deal of time and energy from our office. Normally, there's a brief lull between the adoption of the budget and the end of year activities, but there was no pause this year. In addition to contract negotiations, late spring brought the news that Sal Canada was leaving Leeds, so we started the search that ultimately brought us to Miss Wentz. Three quarters into the way of the Leeds search, Mr. Lombardi announced that he was leaving the high school. I felt that, I felt as if the year was coming full circle, only instead of filling central office positions, I was now facing a wave of principal vacancies. So the pace of the work has been bustling, and the major expenditures of my time have been in the areas of personnel, budget, and program evaluation. And these are all important aspects of the job. They demanded my attention this year, leaving me little time to focus on anything else, so I think I spent my time about as well as I could have. I did miss spending time in the schools and direct contact with families, and I hope that some of the things that have been um, taking me away from that work this year, I'll be able to get back to next year as some of the things currently on my plate um, are able to be resolved. Next year, I think it'll be important for me to focus more time on spending, um, spending time in schools with our new building administrators, and um, we'll also be launching two additional principal searches in the fall for the high school and for Jackson Street. And so I've begun thinking about how I can develop my professional practice goals next year to give me some intention and some focus to getting back into buildings. So that's how I've spent my 180 days and I'm giving you a little glimpse into my intentions for the upcoming year. Uh, I hope you'll agree that focusing on these priorities for the past goal was worthy and that the ambition of spending more times in schools and more times with families in the next year is also a worthwhile goal. That's my report. Thank you, Dr. Burroughs. Next, we have a um, final item on the agenda is a um, executive session uh, request. And I would ask if uh, the vice chair would make a motion on that. Oh, sure. Thank you. Make a motion uh, for an executive session request for the executive session under Massachusetts general law open meeting chapter 38 section 21 a3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the North Canton Association of school committees school, employees. school thank you school employees whereas an open session would have a detrimental effect and further details would compromise the reason for going into executive session is there a second second I would ask the clerk to call a roll call vote on that, and that requires a, a yay or nay. Smalley Barnum? Yay. Laura <laughs> Fallon? Yes. Sam Hennessy? Yes. Jelani Poffett? Yes. Mr. Howard Moore? Yes. 
Susan Voss. Yes. Pastor Ed Zahowski. Yes. Mayor David Narvaez. Yeah. <laughs> Since I said yes or nays, I had to be consistent. Okay, so the motion carries. The school committee will now move into executive session. I need to advise the public that we will be going into executive sessions because to have this conversation in open session would be detrimental to our bargaining position. I also need to advise the public that we will adjourn from executive session so we will not actually return to open session. So with that, we will now move into executive session.